Today is the day we will learn how to set up and do the initial setup of our Creality K1 Max 3D printer. Let's get started guys. In the last video I did the unboxing of it, but in this video I'm going to show you how simple it is to set up this printer and get it to produce your 3D prints. Come, follow me. Hello everyone, this video was translated by an artificial intelligence and I'm doing this because of time, because I'm not actually having time to create content in Portuguese and English. And you can help me change this reality. You can help me clicking on the thumbs up button right below here and you can help me commenting this video. This is the most important action you can do here because commenting the video shows the algorithm that this content is relevant not only for you but for other people like you that loves useful content so share this video click on the thumbs up and comment because this will help me a lot and that will indicate to me that i can dedicate more time creating content like this that can help people like you thank you let's go to the content in the last video, we did the unboxing of my new Creality K1 Max. And speaking of that, thank you Creality for sending us this fantastic printer so we can use it in our projects here. Great show, but today is the day for us to set it up. I wanted to split this into two separate videos because in the previous video, I talked about all its features, functions, sensors, and all the technology that was put into this printer here. And if you missed this video, the link will be in the description so you can go back there and watch it for you to understand everything. I'm not going to repeat everything here because otherwise the video will get long again. So for its configuration, after we remove the screws, the locks of the table and everything else, which is super simple, it already comes with a little kit. It comes with the tool kit here with all the tools you need, not only to do the initial setup, but it also comes with some tools to help you, including in its maintenance, including a key for you to remove the extruder nozzle replace it with a nozzle with different measurements if you want, and so on. Several other cool little tools for you to use in your projects. Okay, now we select the English language, press next, and then it will tell us not to forget to remove the screws from the locks here on the table that we just removed that you saw in the video. Well, we already removed them, so let's move on. Now it's asking me to set up its Wi-Fi, so I'll enter here the information of my Wi-Fi network and we can continue. Here we have already faced the first limitation here of the interface. When you're entering, Wi-Fi, you select the Wi-Fi network it detects and you have to enter obviously your Wi-Fi password. There's just one small detail. My Wi-Fi password has the ampersand in the middle of it. And the interface, how I'm showing you guys this photo on the screen for you, simply doesn't have the ampersand. So either I have to change my Wi-Fi password or I'll try to do this configuration in a little while after we go through this initial setup, okay? So, but now I'll give Skip here so we can move forward and continue setting up the printer. I selected my time zone, let's move forward. Now we have here a QR code that we can use together with the Creality app. Dude, the app is really cool, very practical. You can get models from the catalog, from the Thinkverse version, let's say, from Creality, and you can download these models and even visualize them, rotate them, just like you do in the software on your computer and send them directly to print from your phone. It's really cool, but I'll do that integration in a little while. Uh, we move forward. Now it's time for her to do the self-test, her own verification. So she will test all the components. She will see if everything is responding correctly to say if we can proceed and make a test print on it. So let's proceed. Mm -hmm. 
self test completed. Let's give an okay here. And now I think we, you need to download a template here. One, get the STL file, slice it and perform a test print. What is your opinion on this matter? Let's test. But the most impressive thing about this printer is how easy it is for you to set it up for the first time. Take a look at the screen there. Basically, there are a few steps, I think four or five steps there that you do directly through the little display there on the screen. And you do all the initial configurations, select time zone, set the language and so on. And in the end, it simply goes there and does all the calibration by itself. For me, who has a 3D printer for nine years, but I fell behind. I stayed with my Prusa, with my nine-year-old Prusa i3 version, and I've been working with it until today with my hobbies, with my parts and things from my little projects. Seeing this printer working here and how its initial configuration is for it to already come out and print a ready-made piece for me was impressive. The speed and quality of the printing were impressive. However, during the print, it shook my table so intensely that I was concerned it might cause the table to break. This demonstrates the immense strength of the speed and the powerful inertial effect of the pieces moving at high speed during the printing process. My table is sturdy, it can support a lot of weight, but when the printer was going fast, I thought my table would break from the excessive force. So the first tip is place it on a very stable surface because if you set it to maximum speed to print and you have your fault, for example, on top of a kitchen table, those lighter tables and such, it's even dangerous for it to fall off the table. So here's the first tip. Furthermore, finishing that basic configuration there, uh, let me just make a parenthesis here that is very important. In the basic config, one of the things in the config wizard is the config of the network connection, the Wi-Fi connection, Regrettably, my Wi-Fi has the ampersand in the middle of the password, specifically that small E character. I'll put it on the screen for those who don't know what I'm talking about. It is a special character and it is normal for you to use it in strong passwords because it gives more robustness to the password, just like at, hash and other special characters. However, when I attempted to set up my Wi-Fi password on the interface at Creality, the keyboard interface there simply lacks the ampersand symbol. So the only way I could connect it to my Wi-Fi was by changing my Wi-Fi password. Because I thought that since she had the app on her phone, I would be able to connect directly from the app to her first and then configure it to connect to my Wi-Fi. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. So here's my tip for Creality to improve the interface, adding more character options or making the interface point by point with the mobile device for configuration and bypassing the limitation of the graphical interface. Oh, a little correction about the keyboard interface issue there. After I connected it via cable, it detected an update and I told it to do the update. After the update, it became like this. The interface and the so-called e-commercial came for me to be able to put it on my Wi-Fi network. Furthermore, as soon as you finish going through the assistant, in this Wi-Fi issue, you can bypass it. You can skip to go to the next step. After passing this step, it enters calibration mode. The calibration mode is quite slow. So I will inform you that if you are going to sit there and wait for it to calibrate, then grab a cup of coffee sit comfortably because it takes approximately 10 to 15 minutes to complete the calibration process. Uh, she does a lot of tests by herself. I found this part sensational. Uh, despite, despite the delay, I understand that for all the sensors to calibrate, to understand each other there, it really has to take a little time. But it's impressive the fact that she does all this alone, doing the automatic leveling of the table, which is not new. People who already work with 3D printing and have newer printers already know what it does. However, this one still performs the resonance test, which is precisely for measuring the resonance of the surface where it is in order to try to compensate for the inertial effect of the component's speed when it is at maximum printing speed. Although I think that with flexibility, let's say uh, from my desk, this didn't work very well. 
My bench ended up having some small variations, which I will show you up close on the screen now, but I believe this is because of the variation of the desk, because I really thought it wouldn't vary. But I will put the printer on a much firmer surface later and run more tests on it, especially with other filaments, because this test I did here was with a filament that comes with it, which is a special filament called Hyper PLA, which Creality created specifically to support printing speeds of 600 millimeters per second. I will bring to you in a next video much more complete about these more refined tests about printing, including tests with ABS and with PLAs from other brands that are not from Creality, so we can compare and see exactly what is the print quality and the maximum speed that we can use in Creality. These tests will involve different filaments, speeds, and fine adjustments for comprehensive analysis. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video so you don't miss the next one where I'll be talking to you about these tests. But the video is not over yet, hold on, there are more impressions. When I put the bend to print, I verified that small calibration option. So what action did she take? She went there and printed a zigzag on the table and used LiDAR to scan this zigzag and measure the quality or measure the variation of this zigzag as the first layer because it uses both LiDAR and the camera to measure the quality of the first print, of the first layer there of the print. And if it detects any defect, any problem, it stops the printing. It does not continue. So this helps you a lot to avoid waste of materials. So for me, this is magical, especially for someone who is coming from a printer as old as the one I had before. After that, she gave me a little scare there because when she went to print the first layer of the piece itself, the first layer looked very strange. But I decided to let her continue because I thought she would detect automatically since Creality says it detects automatically if there is any defect there in the first layer. And everything was quiet and she printed with remarkable speed. It was truly impressive how quickly she printed the bench piece. I'm unsure at the moment, but I'll display the information on the screen for you. It will show the exact time it took her to print and the estimated time it would take on my old printer. So I'm going to put both numbers on the screen for you so you can get an idea of the level, the leap of evolution that's coming for this printer here. Noise, let's go. At first, when she called and started doing the calibrations, table leveling and such, I was even happy with the sound she was making because she is very quiet, even without the lid on top. I have not put the lid on yet because I wanted to film it printing the first piece and I wanted good lighting, but I was satisfied with the engine sound. It is extremely quiet. However, when she initiated printing and activated all the coolers she possesses in that location, the noise becomes noticeably loud cannot compare to another printer, old printer I have, or Ender, for example, as they are open printers, lack cooling, okay? This one here has multiple coolers for cooling, so you can't make a direct comparison. The only thing I can say is that if you intend to buy one of these and put it inside the office where you'll be working during the day while it prints, it will bother you a little. So it's something I won't do here, for example. I'm not going to let her print on a day when I need to work, when I need to attend to clients, when I need to have a call. I suggest that you place her in a location where she does not disturb anyone, all right? She is quiet. I think she's quiet about drivers, engines, and everything else. She's quieter than my other one, but overall, when she turns on the coolers, it's better. She is currently positioned in her small corner. All right, so what was my ultimate impression in regards to the brand new Creality K1 Max 3D printer? I will inform you the following in my capacity as a roboticist that I am not an expert in printing. What is a printing professional? That guy who lives, who generates income through the products he prints on printers. The guys with farms there, that is, they have printer farms, have 5, 6, 10, 20 printers there. Producing 24 hours to be able to sell these parts or later work and customize them. I am not that type of person. I do not have that type of revenue derived from 3D printing but I utilize it to create parts, components, and utilities for my residents, for the projects that I am currently working on, small electronic projects, engineering projects, and all other tasks. In my opinion, this is an ideal printer for non-professionals. 
I'm not suggesting that professionals should not purchase it. I believe that a professional could obtain a more affordable printer, perhaps an open printer, that is situated in a controlled environment with regulated temperature and without any interference from wind or other factors. With such a printer, they could achieve the same, if not better, print quality as printers, like the Ender 3, which offers excellent print quality, automatic leveling and other features. In my view, a printer like the Ender 3 provides the opportunity for more customization and fine adjustments, allowing for equally, if not superior, quality results. I observe numerous individuals expressing their dissatisfaction in the forums, particularly the individuals who work in a professional capacity due to Creality's decision to restrict access to the firmware and limit the customization options on this printer. Consequently, the individuals were quite upset about it. There, one more correction. Between the recording and editing of this video, Creality announced that it transformed Clipper, the software it utilizes in this printer, or its own version of Clipper, is that correct as mentioned in the video, in an open source version. So for the people who complained and stuff, who didn't want to buy the K1 because Creality's Clipper version was closed, now they won't be able to complain anymore. It is open, it is open source, you can download, customize and update the firmware of your K1 and K1 Max. To have a printer like this that I put here on the table, do the initial setup, and I can start printing, even if the print is not perfect, millimetrically, you know, like all those little details that people pay a lot of attention to, but I think it can be calibrated and it will reach that level. I think that even if you don't have that precision, let's say, in the print, it performs very well in terms of the quality it delivered to me in the first print it is much superior to the quality of the first print I had with my printer nine years ago, of course. However, the aspect that truly impressed me about her was how effortlessly she could be put to work, eliminating the necessity for me to handle all the calibrations, adjustments, tests, and other related tasks. My old printer works very well. It's been nine years since I have it. It uses the same original table. It still uses the same extruder. It never burned out, and it makes high-quality prints. What's her problem? The issue is that every time I use it, I need to do calibration, table leveling, because each time it's different. I need to make adjustments, even in the script, in the G-code, in order to be able to print, depending on the type of object being printed. It's not about the quality of the piece itself, it's simply because it can print. One time it doesn't adhere to the table, another time it adheres, but the second layer comes out crooked, the piece cracks, and so on. So I believe this printer here is an excellent product for individuals who do not wish to learn how to configure and make these precise adjustments. Someone who wants a printer to put on the table, print and create things, create parts, create household utilities, download from the internet and put them in here to create something to use for personal use. And as I said, I don't think it's not recommended for professionals, but it's perfect for this type of user, for the more common, more normal user, for us mere mortals who don't understand much about 3D printing. I found it fantastic. I recommend 100% this printer for anyone who wants to buy, for anyone who wants to have a printer and has no knowledge and wants to start. It is perfect for beginners and the quality leaves nothing to be desired. Although I know that I will have to do some calibration so that we can really reach its maximum, but I think it is perfect for beginners. And remember that this one is the K1 Max, which has a print area of 30x30x30, 30 x 30 x 30, so it has a much larger print area. The K1 has a smaller print area. If I'm not wrong, it's 21 or 22 centimeters in area, but it doesn't leave anything to be desired. My old printer was 22x22 and I used it for nine years printing various different parts and it never let me down because of lack of space. If you're considering buying a K1 instead of a K1 Max due to the price difference, it'll be worth it. The only detail is that the K1 does not come with the camera and if I'm not mistaken it also does not come with LiDAR but you can buy it separately and install it there in your K1 and start using it as well. Moreover, automatic calibration, automatic setup, everything else remains exactly identical just with a reduced print area size. So here's my recommendation, my opinion that it's an excellent printer for those who are starting. If you want to buy or if you have already bought, leave your opinion here in the comments because I want to know what your impression was with the Creality printer. Closed, so don't forget to subscribe and leave a like because in the upcoming video I will demonstrate the tests I conducted with various filament brands on this printer and with the minor adjustments to achieve a flawless print. Are you in agreement? Thank you for watching the video thus far. A big hug 
and until we meet again next time, 